So I have a confession. I admit that I struggled with the talk today. So much ran through my mind. Topics came and went. Nothing seemed to stick. It was probably serendipitous that uh, I was looking through my inbox one morning and the top 25 best TED Talks came into my inbox. And so, naturally, I looked through them. I would tell you that they didn't help me much. I was no closer to figuring out what I was going to do today. Uh, don't get me wrong, they were great talks. I encourage everybody to watch them. Great stuff. But they didn't help me. Then it hit me. So, before I tell you what I'm going to tell you, ironically, uh, my son, who I'm going to tell the story about, is here today. Um, and in fact, all three of my boys are here today. And this is probably the first time that they're going to hear me tell this story. So, it kind of makes it extra special. So when my son was four, I was encouraged to try to test him in this gifted program. I was hesitant. Very, very hesitant. A lot of things, again, just like today, ran through my mind. And I struggled with that. I sat on it, thought about it, talked to my wife about it, sat on it some more. And then I was asked again, right, do you want to test him for this gifted program? So at that point I said, what the heck, let's do it. So I had him tested. After the test, my worst fears came true. He failed. And when I heard that, it was pretty heavy and, and something that just had to sink in. As part of the debriefing of this assessment, the administrator or the assessor sat down with us and she says, um, here's what happened. And here's where it gets really interesting. So my son failed this gifted program test. But he failed, and the, and the proctor said that if he got any one of these three points correct, he would have passed. So here's those three points. First thing she says is that we showed him a picture of a spotted pig, and he didn't know what it was. And so he looked at the picture, and mind you, this was like a black and white drawing, it looked something like clip art. And he looked at it, and he didn't know what a spotted pig was. And I think that was because all the shows that he watched at, at that point never had a spotted pig, only one colored pig. In fact, he loved to watch cartoons with pigs in it. And he didn't know what it was. So he looked at it, and he said, I don't know what that is, but it could be a Dalmatian. She said, you're wrong. And then she said, point two, if you got correct, he would have passed. So. Point two was she showed him a picture of a cow. Coming from where we come from in the islands, we don't have camels. And so he didn't know what a camel was. And I think at that point too, um, I didn't show him any uh, cartoon with a camel on it. And so he probably didn't know what it was. But he had enough sense to look at that and say, I don't know what that is. But I think it's an alpaca or a llama. She said, you're wrong. The third part was a black and white picture again of a fish, clip art. And she says, what is this? And he says, and at that point, knowing my son, who's kind of never done things the way that the system intended, looks at that and he hyper-focuses on the dorsal fin at the top and looks at the proctor and says, and she told us that this four-year-old boy told her almost a six, seven-minute story that he made up about a witch, goblins, and a fantastical story that he created in his mind because that dorsal fin looked like a witch's hat. But because she did not tell, because he did not say that this was a fish, he was wrong, and so he failed. In fact, it was interesting because in the debrief, as she was talking, uh, and 
he kind of passed by from what I understood. And he also said, and in the conversation he kind of interrupted and, and he was, then he referred back to the fish and he said, you know that fish? And the proctor stopped and said, wait, what, what was that? And, and he said, you know, the fish. She goes, well, why didn't you tell me that that was what it was? And he goes, because you asked me about it. I told you a story. But he was wrong. So what's my point in all this? Well, so much of the system is made in a certain way. And I think sometimes so much of that system is there are children and there are people, not only children, but there are people in the system that the system's not ready for. What he was displaying at that point was critical thinking and association beyond his ears. And I'll tell you, it's something as a college professor, I struggle with just trying to get college students to think about. Here's a four-year-old demonstrating that. And I can't help but think, what would have happened if we continued on this path where he was told to believe he was wrong? And so it became apparent to me that one of the things that I needed to do was make sure that he continued that type of uh, thought process. And he, he continued to grow his thinking like that. You know, one of the things that are inherent to our moral culture are concepts like enafa malik. Enafa, uh, to make, and malik, good. And so there's, there's this cultural concept that we have that says that when harmony is broken, and when something is out of order, it's inherently in us to make it right. And that's where enafa malik comes from. It's what do we do to restore that harmony and order, and what do we do to make it right? And I think that that's an important lesson today. And for me, that is the lesson of the day. When my son was told that he was wrong, the question was, was he really wrong? Did he really fail? Or did the system fail him? And this is my story, and I hope that this is one that resonates with you. You know, and I think that we could all use a little bit more harmony in the world today. I think that it is important in all of the things that are going on today. And, you know, with all the things that are wrong with the world, little Nafa Malik can go along with it. So from me to you, what good would you make today?